Well, newsletter platform Substack is expanding its offerings, even as a startup faces major headwinds in funding. The company recently announced it is suspending future fundraising and laying off 14 percent of its staff, citing deteriorating macroeconomic conditions. I spoke to CEO and co-founder Chris Best about the company's financials and how he plans to grow the platform. Take a listen. It's really interesting. You know, there was a there's a question we had early on uh, when we started was, hey, we think this will definitely work for a business audience. Our first publisher on Substack was a guy named Bill Bishop. He wrote sort of a newsletter about China for an international business and government audience. And that worked astoundingly well. And we sort of had this question of, you know, this will work for business audiences, but will it work in general? And since then, that answer has kind of come to be a resounding yes. We've had everyone from opinion columnists to sports writers, to culture writers, to fiction, to like, you know, all kinds of interesting consumer things. And now we're actually seeing a, a pretty big growth spurt back in kind of like the finance and investing and markets world. But I think this the power of this model works across a lot of different domains. It's not like there's one section of the world that 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 this applies to. The principle of like, I want to take back my mind as a reader. I want to connect directly with and support directly voices that I trust, things that I want to have in my mind is kind of broadly compelling. Uh, let's talk about an announcement that recently came down a few weeks ago. You announced you're going to be laying off 14% of your workforce, uh, 13 out of 90 employees. And you said that in part that was so that you wanted to be able to fund your operations through your own revenue without relying on additional financing. What does that revenue picture look like right now? What is that revenue? So first of all, this was like a super tough thing to have to do. I mean, we let go some people that are great. Um, the good news for Substack is that we do have a business model that works. So our, our business model, in case you don't know, is it's totally free to publish on Substack. You can publish, start tomorrow, publish to whatever size audience you want. And then we only make money when you make money. So once you start, if you, if, and when you choose to charge subscriptions, we take a cut of the revenues. And that means that our incentives are aligned with the people on the platform, which also means that our revenue grows as the business, as the sort of market value of every, all the writers on Substack grows. Uh, and that does continue to grow strongly. Um, so we have a business model that makes sense at kind of the unit economics level and is growing strongly. So there's no reason why we can't fund the company out of revenue, which is of course a good thing to be able to do when you're in a tough uh, market. Um, you know, the, that announcement of the layoffs obviously came down after you announced you're were, you were going to be dropping your fundraising efforts. Uh, the last funding round, as I understand it last year, $65 million was raised there. Um, this is obviously something, you know, so many startups are going through right now. What's your sense on how long this winter, you know, whatever analogy you want to make, how long this downturn lasts? I think the honest answer is that we don't know. Um, I don't think that anyone knows. And the question that we companies like ours have to deal with then is sort of given that we don't know, how should we plan and what's the right way to, to operate? And the way that we've approached it is kind of like, look, we're not going to have any plan that involves wanting or planning on a fundraise for at least two years, maybe ever. Um, and that doesn't mean to say that we wouldn't consider that if the situation changed and, and, and the markets were in a good place. It's not like we, we don't necessarily don't want to, but we kind of want to have a plan A that does not require it. And I think a lot of companies are coming to that similar conclusion. And so you may not be relying on, on funding for some time. Obviously, that raises questions of, is there a way to expand your revenue base? I know you've really been focused on subscriptions, not necessarily an advertising model. Is that something that you now have to consider given the current environment? I actually think our decision to focus on subscriptions to the exclusion of advertising is one of the strategic strengths of the company and one of the reasons that we make as much money as we do and the revenue continues to grow because although it seems superficially like, you know, subscription revenue is money and advertising revenue is money. And if you did both, you, you know, two monies is greater than one money. I think the fact of the matter is that the kind of business you make and the kind of work you do as a writer on Substack, um, when you want to win at the subscription game to appeal to 
earn and keep the loyalty of an audience that deeply values your work and make something that's so good that it's worth paying for. The kind of work you do when that's your only goal is qualitatively different and better than the kind of work you have to do if you want to kind of like get to a broad, you know, a lot of clicks and a lot of views and please advertisers. And so that focus on subscriptions is actually our biggest differentiating factor. So I don't think that we'll, we'll change that necessarily. As you laid out, you know, the, the, the main business for Substack has, has been these newsletters. We've come accustomed to reading every day, but you've also expanded into um, Substack for podcasts. You've also got um, video player for creators that, that you've been testing out. How do you see this all evolving? I mean, what does Substack look like a few years from now in terms of how much of it is the newsletter that we know, how much of it is podcast, how much is video? Yeah, people have often thought of Substack as a platform for your paid email newsletter. And I think that that's a, a useful conceptual handle for it because it's it sort of captures the essence of it. But the, the reason that that's a winning formula is that an email newsletter gives you a direct connection with your audience. So when you when a reader subscribes to somebody on Substack, they don't subscribe to Substack, they subscribe to that writer who has their own business, who has their own, owns all of their work, owns their connection with their audience. They can bring their email list to Substack. They can take their email list away from Substack. And that's actually not only exciting in the medium of writing, right? The, the same thing applies for podcasting. The same thing applies for uh, high value video content. We've seen a lot of writers who want to do a podcast. We've seen a lot of writers who want to host their subscriber community. We think that the, the set of formats that work under this model is actually quite large. And the magic of it is in that direct connection with your audience that you own. And that was Substack CEO and co-founder Chris Vest speaking on the future of the platform. You can catch the full interview on our website, yahoofinance.com.